Hey guys, I'm going to be going over my Shenandoah muzzle loader that I just completed for my SDI project. Uh, starting with the unboxing, um, I've never done a black powder build to begin with, so I was a little uh, nervous and excited at the same time. Um, the kit came with the muzzle loader itself, which is shown here. Um, the stock was all in one piece. It came with a bag of uh, screws and parts. The flint, uh, the percussion cap right here, this was one piece. The barrel, the sights, and the uh, screws were all in the bag together. The trigger assembly piece, which is screwed in right there, was separate. And then the brass pieces were all uh, in a bag together. The ramrod was separate. Um, so in the unboxing itself, um, I had to sort out the pieces. Um, the one thing that kind of threw me, this is the schematic that is sent to us. It's not very detailed to say the least. Um, the screws were of similar size and shape in a lot of the cases. So there was a bit of figuring that out, which was honestly one of the hardest parts for me just because so many of them look the same, were the same size, same thread pattern. Um, that kind of threw me for a loop. Um, I did follow the instructions in the muzzle loader lab. So I began with the inletting of the stock um, right around the uh, percussion area here, just because that's the most fragile piece. So uh, using the inletting black around the edges here, I fit that and then using the two wood carving tools there that I purchased from Brownells, uh, I inletted out the wood there to fit that in. That was followed by inletting of the buttstock here and the toe plate as well to the point where they fit nice and smooth there against the back of the stock uh, and could screw in with the plate, the screws there and on the bottom of the stock. Um, I then began to inlet for the thimbles, first the rear thimble, then the, the front thimble. Um, the thimbles are where I've got into a lot of the trouble area actually. Uh, the screws for the rear thimble were not long enough. I actually purchased some additional ones from Shenandoah. Um, they sent me four of them. I tried with two of the four and they still were not long enough to fit through there. So I really had to uh, remove some of the wood from inside of the stock itself in order to make that fit. Um, after that, I began inletting for the trigger piece itself, the fire control group there, followed by the inletting of that brass itself. Once I had everything there assembled, I made sure that the moving parts worked, and just so that we can see, you can see that it's in half cock there, full cock, let me clear that spent round. The rear trigger locks it, it does dry fire. Um, I have video of me shooting at the range yesterday. After that was a little bit of uh, sanding of the stock, just kind of making sure this was all nice and smooth. Um, the barrel tenons were actually done before um, cleaning this up. That was lining these parts up here. You can see the holes drilled through the stock there. Um, inserting the barrel tenons using the needle file to smooth out the metal for the dovetail on those. Making sure that those lined up and drilling through the wood and the metal all at once. Um, there's a couple little pins in here that hold them on. You can see a little bit of damage here to the stock. One of the pins went in crooked when I did the final assembly of the barrel and actually took part of the stock out with it, which I then had to repair later uh, with some wood glue and epoxy and then sand down again before finishing. Um, after the tenons were in, uh, I did shape the stock a little bit, just making sure that the overall shape did hold. You can see that the round parts are still round. The part right here, I did gouge, uh, did carve this out a little bit more just so that the hammer did have a little bit more room there. It was a little too smooth. Um, the hammer caught just a little bit there. I did have to re-inlet this part here a little bit more and down into the trigger assembly a little more just to make sure all of that fit properly and the screws would hold. Um, after that, I took my barrel to work. I work at a gunsmith shop at a range in town um, and I browned my barrel there using the uh, quick brown. I applied four coats of it, got a nice hue that I liked, applied some gun oil after it was all done, brought it home, mounted it up. My brass was hand polished with uh, up to 480 grit, just because that's what I ended up having on hand. After I did that, I stained the wood 
Um, I used this gun stock wood finish here. I ended up doing three coats followed by this clear satin oil based uh, finish. That's all of this. The ramrod itself was finished with an espresso wood stock or wood stain and then the same clear coat just to give it a little bit of difference between that and the overall stock of the gun itself. Um, following that, I did drill for the nose cap there, making sure all the pieces stayed nice and tight. The final step was fitting my sights, making sure that they lined up. Again, taking off just enough metal to get them into the dovetail, um, making sure that they were in there nice and tight and drifting them in with a, uh, a rawhide hammer and a punch. After the final assembly, I made sure the rifle dry fired, made sure all of the pieces were working and functional, that none of the wood in the inside had any, uh, any issues locking up. And then I took it to the range. And the video of the range is, uh, is separate, but the gun did fire, put a few rounds through it yesterday, and I was pleasantly surprised by the lack of recoil on the gun. It, uh, it shot out to at least 100, 150 yards with no issue. And it was gentle. I was very, very surprised. Um, so overall, I would say that it was a, a fun and challenging project.